My name is Jack and I'm obsessed with all things fish. I'm trying to catch a hundred different species of fish from British waters as I fly, course and see fish for whatever comes along. How are we all doing? So this week I'm in Berlin, Germany and I'm going to be looking into the reintroduction of European sturgeon. I'm also going to go to Berlin Aquarium and have a look at that. I want to find out some of the facts and the myths behind the reintroduction of European sturgeon and how that relates back home in the UK where hopefully we'll get them back as well. Let's get into this. I ate my body weight in sausage and beer while in Berlin and I visited the Natural History Museum which it wasn't too fish heavy but it did have some interesting fossils, a whole wet specimen room full of various fish species and some incredible taxidermy including a very convincing panda and a thylacine, one of the best specimens in Europe. Now one of the other side tracks that I did while I was here was I went to the Berlin Zoo Aquarium. Now the zoo and the aquarium are owned by the same company, but if you just want to go to the aquarium, you can do that individually. Now it has all the usual tropical species, and they had some really interesting marine tanks and with all the kind of colourful fish that you'd expect. But there were one or two things that stood out to me. Last time I came here, which was a few years ago, this whole section was just arapaima, but they've split it up now. And one of the middle sections is full of alligator gar. These are incredible looking fish. And you know what? I don't think I've ever seen an alligator gar in the flesh before. So it was amazing to see them up close. They get a lot bigger than this, but these are still pretty chunky specimens. The star of the show here, however, are the Arapaima. Arapaima are reputed to be one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And they are absolute units. These things were much bigger than me. They look primordial. They've got huge scales. It is impossible to not be impressed by these fish, so it was great to see those. Whenever I go to any kind of aquarium, what I'm mainly looking for is native species. I'm always interested in that. And Berlin Aquarium did have a couple of interesting mixes within their tanks. So one of them had a marine tank with things like dogfish, with bass and flatfish, but they also had a brown trout in there, which makes complete sense. You get sea trout, a sea trout is just a brown trout that goes to sea. So I thought it was a really interesting choice to have a brown trout in a marine tank. They've also, on the same vein of that, had a, a stickleback tank, three-spined stickleback, in a marine environment, and there was also flounder in there, so a kind of interesting mix. They had a sole uh, brown trout tank as well, just one large brown trout in it. And at the end, they had some koi, which... I'm not a big fan of seeing koi at aquariums, but there was some koi there along with an absolutely enormous albino wells catfish. I do remember last time I went a few years ago, they did have some perch and barbel and stuff. So it's a shame they didn't have more native species, but on the whole, I recommend Berlin Aquarium. It's an interesting one. If you're in the city and you like fish, it's well worth going to. On the way to go and see the sturgeon, I went via the Tiergarten and I saw signs of beaver in the park. So it just goes to show that you can have beavers within a large capital city living absolutely fine. And I also saw some red squirrels and a goshawk, which is an absolute highlight for me. I always find it really weird seeing red squirrels in urban environments because back in the UK, we don't get red squirrels in urban environments. We get the grey ones. So really nice to see some red squirrels. I took a metro ride from the city centre to the IGB and they had a collection of European sturgeon. So essentially, they are breeding sturgeon to be re reintroduced into some of the German rivers. I think that these European sturgeon are mainly for the Elbe. I might be saying that wrong, sorry if I am. Uh, but there's also another catchment that they're doing it. At another facility, they're breeding Atlantic sturgeon, which are the other European species of sturgeon. But these are all European sturgeon, which are uh, Acipensa sturio, I think. Again, I'm shit with Latin names, so I apologise if I've said that wrong. I'm going to tell you a few facts about European sturgeon before going into the reintroduction of it all. So primarily, the adults feed on mollusks, shrimps and small fish, although they're not really an active predator. They just sort of move around scooping stuff up. 
They're also a host for pearl mussels, which in the UK we primarily associate them with trout and salmon, but sturgeon are also a suitable host. So potentially reintroducing sturgeon also helps another very rare species. They can grow over 300 kilograms. So these things get absolutely bloody enormous. They're an andromenous fish, which means they migrate from the sea to fresh water to spawn. So these sturgeon do not live in fresh water all of the time. They live in the sea for most of the time and they come into fresh water to breed briefly. They don't die after spawning. They just come in, they spawn, they leave. And unlike other sturgeon species, the adults don't feed in fresh water. It's one thing I see all the time in the UK. People are claiming to catch native sturgeon in rivers. They will not be the native sturgeon. They will be uh, sterlets, they'll be diamond sturgeon, Siberian sturgeon. They won't be the European sturgeon. They were a relatively common species throughout Europe, the European sturgeon from the North Sea, uh, the Atlantic coast, Northern Mediterranean, Black Sea, all the major rivers entering them. Certainly within the UK, uh, European sturgeon have been found historically within the Thames, the Trent, the Severn, into the Welsh Wye, into many of the Scottish rivers like the Tay and the Spey would have had sturgeon. There's no evidence to suggest that they were particularly common, but they definitely were present in all of those rivers. One of the major issues with European sturgeon is how long it takes for them to mature. It takes 13 to 15 years for a male sturgeon and 16 to 20 years for a female sturgeon. So that's a hell of a long time for these things to grow without getting poached, predated or killed before them being able to breed. The caveat to that is these things are long lived so they can live well over 100 years. So once they do reach sexual maturity, the populations should start to bounce back, but it's getting them to that stage. European sturgeon are classed as critically endangered, so they are a very rare species. So what do I think? Are we going to get European sturgeon back in the UK? Well, there is an organisation called the UK Sturgeon Alliance, which is working to try and reintroduce sturgeon back. The most likely candidate uh, for this would be the River Severn, because it's a big river, Historically, it had European sturgeon, and recently, millions and millions of pounds via the Unlocking the Seven project has meant that the River Seven is, for the most part, passable for sturgeon. So, if there was a river that was kind of set up for them, it would be the Seven. They like to feed in estuaries, and obviously, the Seven estuary is absolutely enormous. So, you've got the feeding ground for the juveniles at the bottom, you've got suitable breeding ground further up, and you've got free passage further up. What's interesting is that European sturgeon from other reintroduction projects will probably recolonise the UK on their own, albeit very slowly. So we are starting to catch European sturgeon in trawlers off the British coast. And, this, and in the last few years, a few individuals have been caught. So we know that they're swimming around the British coastline. What we don't know is if they're entering our rivers yet. And it's only a matter of time before they do it on their own. So by giving them a helping hand, by reintroducing a few, we could potentially see this charismatic and interesting fish come back. So the setup here at Berlin was fairly simple. They had some absolutely enormous tanks and these tanks were for the breeding adults. So these adult fish are never going to be released. They're just brood stock. They're kept in the tanks, they feed them up, they strip the eggs and then it's the the juveniles from these parent fish that get raised on and then released. So I was able to see some of the adults in a couple of the tanks and they also had some juveniles outside in uh, ponds that they were rearing on as well. Did notice some carp, some roach and a few other species in there as well. It was absolutely amazing to be able to see European sturgeon up close and personal. So thank you so much to the IGB for letting me come along and have a look at those fish. I do hope that we see them back in the UK. Much like the Berber, it's a species that I think should be back in the UK. And I am hopeful that, at least within my lifetime, we might very well get this fish back. I know that there are concerns. People saying that the water quality is not good enough, that the money could be spent on species that are already here. And I hear that. But what I would say is that these species should be here and it's largely our fault that they're not here now. So we have a moral obligation to bring these fish back to British waters. And at the very least, we need to have these fish in captivity in the UK as a starter. 
So even if you want to go down the route that our rivers are too polluted, given how long these fish take to mature, we at least need some brood stock in the UK to get the ball rolling. And we can take it from there. There's been feasibility studies done, and I do believe that the seven at least is suitable for them. It's not perfect water quality, but it is uh, enough that they would survive and they'd be able to breed. So that's good enough for me. So I hope that we do get these fish back. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out some of the other videos when I've gone abroad? I've been to places like Iceland, the Netherlands, Austria, ordering some fishy stuff. So check out the playlist if you want to see my travels abroad. I'll see you in the next vid. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this vid, why not check out this other video right here? If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.